Well, for those of you who have been around the art scene for a while, you're probably familiar with the work of Jess. His name was actually Burgess Collins. He was born in Long Beach, California. He was one of the great exponents of the California kind of psychedelic funk art. This is a great painting. This is called Credo Socrates Translation Number 3, 1964. I always loved Jess's work. And uh, he really represents what I would call the independent eccentric artist. It's called Goddess Because Because 1954. Uh, Jess was originally trained as a uh, nuclear physicist and I guess was working on the Manhattan Project just after he'd gotten out of school in the early 40s, but uh, he had a dream of a nuclear holocaust destroying the world and decided to drop out of the military industrial complex and do something completely useless like being an artist. So at that point he went to San Francisco began studying art, studied with people like Clifford Still, David Parks, and met people like Mark Rothko and Ed Reinhardt. This piece is titled In Praise of Sir Edward, translation number 7, 1965. This is one of the extraordinary things about these pieces is his lines are actually negative. They're indented into the surface almost as if they were carved in or cut in, but I think he actually just built up the layers of paint around them and left them as if they were scratched right through the paint surface. Now, Jess was also very well known for his collages, and he called them paste-ups. But I think he represents a branch of real ultra-hip, eccentric, obsessive painting that is just fantastic. And he called the paintings translations because many times he would base these on illustrations in children's books. This is called Example 1, Laying a Standard Translation Number 1, 1959. Unfortunately, a lot of these are behind glass because they're so textural and, and built up that people would probably have a tendency to want to touch them and pick at them. But you can see, he spends months, maybe years, building up these surfaces. He's got a great color sense as well. He's also maybe even better known for his collages. This is called Napoleonic Geometry of Art, 1968. And he's got his dense collages. This also has a kind of uh, fine black line scratched in the glass that he's framed this with. And this piece is available for $250,000. I think one of the great things about Jess is that in a lot of ways he's kind of a uh, proto-hippie. A lot of these images kind of explore that whole proto-psychedelic realm. It's another one of his great translations. Ritra Roars, Savages, number 7, 1965 to 1981. 
This is titled Quantum Quiddities. It's one of his pay stubs. Seem to have a great uh, affinity towards Victorian kitsch. This is uh, probably the largest piece in the show. It's called Cryogenic Considerations. One horn of the sounding one horn of the dilemma, winter 1980. This is a very large collage considering how dense the imagery is. It's got a lot of references to art history in here. We've got Rembrandt's Man in the Golden Helmet. There's a little detail of a Wong Gri that uh, just died in 2004 at the age of 80. And at that point I think he could have been one of the most important and influential of all the West Coast independents, West Coast eccentrics. And I think Jess must have been part of the whole kind of beatnik and proto-hippie scene that was going on in San Francisco at the time. This is Untitled Graces, 1978 from the collection of the Albert Knox Art Gallery. I think another interesting thing about Jess is that uh, when he was still a student, he happened to hook up with Robert Duncan, the famous West Coast poet, and they were a couple for the next 35 or 40 years until Duncan passed away, I guess, in the mid to late 90s. This is kind of a great example of some of his work that he did with jigsaw puzzles. I've seen some of his pieces that are very large and he actually uses several puzzles and actually is able to fit the pieces from one puzzle into another and keep working on them, doing them in several layers. This is example three. Fion's Finnegan's Translation Number 4, 1964. And being a painter myself, I've been a big fan of Jess's paintings for years. And it's amazing how he's able to use such thick, wrinkly, and chunky paint strokes, but he's able to get the kind of uh, sharp articulations of his imagery and like an illustrator. I think he's also maybe one of the most underrated or unknown fantastic painters in America and has been for about uh, 30 years. This is beautiful. Share a party line. I can see that we're getting some of his early gay imagery here, which must have been quite a quite a challenging realm to be working in in the 50s. Meeting ground, imaginary portrait number 11. Chester Villalba and Robert Steinberg, 1954. I just think that this is probably a very important period in California. People like Kenneth Anger running around, Bruce Conner, David Park. Must have been a great time to be in California. This is James Calm coming to you from the Tibor Dinaj Gallery, 724 Fifth Avenue. And we're reporting on Jess, paintings and paste-ups. Thanks, Kate.